Hello, artists. This week we are going to be discussing Renaissance art. Uh, Renaissance art came around the time period of 1300 AD to 1600 AD. Uh, it was an art movement in Europe that emerged as a distinct art style and occurred along with uh, great developments in philosophy, literature, music, and science. Uh, Renaissance in French means rebirth. Uh, the art period at this time, it was still very religious, but there was moving more towards uh, based on nature and classical Greek and Roman art. This is the painting, The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, da Vinci was a very diligent worker. He worked all the time. Um, it was said that he would work on this uh, fresco from the beginning of the morning. He would climb up onto a scaffolding and he would be there until uh, easy way into nighttime. And oftentimes he would just skip food entirely. Uh, this is actually not a painting. This is a fresco that is done on a wall. Um, a couple of fun facts about this is there is a lot of symbolism inside of this uh, painting um, that you can see uh, some, of the, some of the spilled uh, salt on the table. Uh, all the disciples, pretty much everything that they're doing it has some sort of hidden symbolism. For example, Judas' face is um, almost hidden in the painting. And also a lot of the disciples' hands are showing a lot of things with symbolism. Another fun fact is that this uh, painting or fresco has been painted, repainted, tampered with, uh, almost destroyed many times and actually the building that it was that it is in uh, was once used as a horse stable by Napoleon during one of his wars. This is the painting Hunters in the Snow by Peter Bruel the Elder in 1565. Uh, it is part of a five part series of the seasons um, that Peter Bruel did um, of all the different seasons. And it shows that the painters during the Renaissance started to move away from religious and portrait imagery and moved um, kind of out into landscapings, which was a little bit different than the time. Um, they were also getting very detailed uh, compared to the previous movement um, with their artwork. You could see in this close up of the people and you could even see little every tree branch is painted in. Um, it's very detailed artwork. You can see out here. This is a painting, Lady with an Earmine, by Leonardo da Vinci. So da Vinci did the Mona Lisa. This is another one of his uh, women's portraits. He only did four women's portraits over his entire career. So this is a pretty rare uh, version of a painting um, for da Vinci. Uh, according to some art historians, this is the first portrait of a modern age in the modern age world. Um, very photorealistic. Uh, the portrait is a great example of Leonardo's individual painting style and his unique use of light and shadow crossing. You notice that the background is completely dark. Um, that is one of the hallmarks of the Renaissance paintings. Uh, it's the first Renaissance painting to show a woman of her personality and beauty and wasn't just uh, exact representation. A um, couple of things of note is the close-up of the ermine or a weasel. Um, this is actually a symbol of a prince that the 16-year-old woman in the portrait fell in love with at the time. And he was sometimes went by the nickname of the white ermine. Hence, da Vinci put, could not put uh, the prince in the portrait, so this is a symbol. And symbolism is a, used a lot in Renaissance painting. This is the painting, The Birth of Venus by Botticelli. Uh, it embodies the rebirth of civilization, a new hope, a geopolitical, social, cultural shift that was happening. This is the time that we were moving out of the Middle Ages and into a time of uh, great hope. The Renaissance, again, is like named for a rebirth. Uh, we had a lot of advancements in technology, science, philosophy, painting, um, sculpture, a lot of uh, rebirth, hence the birth of Venus. And 
This is considered one of the world's most stunning works of art. This is The Young Hare by Albert Durer. Uh, Durer was a painter and particularly interest to me is he was a printmaker, uh, which means he used uh, different methods to create his artworks. This is one of his earliest known works. He's also known highly for his imagery of painting and making prints of animals. Um, and this is an excellent example of his supreme uh, detail and realism. And another hallmark of Durer's uh, artwork is the lack of background, which also you see a lot in the Renaissance painting. This is The Creation of Adam by Michelangelo, and it is part of the Sistine Chapel, which is a huge uh, ceiling of the Sistine Chapel that Michelangelo painted. It took him four years to paint, and Michelangelo hated painting it. He said that it was the worst time of his life was painting this. There are over 380 people depicted in all of the panels. And some people think that the creation of Adam actually is a symbolism of the human brain, and it kind of has similar uh, features to what the human brain actually looks like. Again, symbolism was a big part of the Renaissance. Here is some things that uh, characteristics of Renaissance art. Um, uh, coming out of the Middle Times, they used a lot of correct proportion. Um, science was being advanced a lot. So the artists, uh, especially like Da Vinci was also a scientist. So he tried to make everyone look exactly how they were and had the correct proportions for all of the parts of the body and everything. A um, couple of um, vocabulary words is fumato, which means to smoke, where the sharp lines are softened. You can kind of see the example in here. And chiaroscuro, which is we've kind of talked about a little bit before, which means dark and light. And that was the high contrast where the artists would have a focal point of light and then everything was very dark. Uh, a couple other characteristics is they borrowed heavily from classical Greek and Roman art. Uh, still influenced by Christianity, but um, did use a lot of mythology and stories from Greek and Roman art. Um, not just the clergy was paying for artworks now, it was you were getting uh, wealthy businessmen and nobles, and oil painting was the most popular method. Again, chiaroscuro is the art of using strong contrast between light and dark. Uh, this was usually done to make the composition a lot more dramatic. It's a technical term used by art historians and artists about the contrast of light. And it gives a sense of three-dimensionality to the figures. Um, also used a lot in cinematography and photography. And here are some examples of that focal light point, usually a lamp or something, and then the light emanating from there and everything else very dark. Uh, one of the most important artists of the Renaissance was Leonardo da Vinci. He uh, is one of the greatest artists and scientists of all time. He was born in Italy and he began to learn about painting, sculpture, and like I said, it was also a very influential scientist during the Italian Renaissance. Um, he was a great seeker of knowledge. He lived from 1452 to 1519. He kept numerous journals which he would keep his observation, observations in around the world. Um, his journals included detailed pictures and sketch, sketches of Many objects, uh, ideas, they illustrated designs of bridges, flying machines, the anatomy, anything that he thought was interesting, he would sketch down in his journal. Uh, he would draw intricate pictures of the human muscles, um, the skeleton. Um, he was a very intelligent and a gifted artist. Um, he would also write all of the words that you see here um, backwards, or actually in mirror prints, so that he thought that uh, no one would be able to read his journals if he did that. Um, not very, uh, like, it's hard to figure out. Uh, you just have to hold a mirror up, but he thought that it would keep people from doing his um, reading of his journals. Uh, two of his most famous paintings, which are the most famous, is the Mona Lisa, which is probably the most famous painting. In and then also, as we talked about, The Last Supper. After this, we will um, talk a little bit more about um, Leonardo da Vinci.